I'm going to talk about some of the events after the taxi driver Paul Stein was murdered on Saturday night. October 13, 1969, Monday, the Zodiac Killer mailed a letter with a scrap of Paul's bloody shirt to the San Francisco Chronicle. Sunday, the San Francisco Examiner issued a plea to the Zodiac Killer to turn himself into the police. Early in the morning Tuesday, someone called the Oakland Police Department at 2 a.m. and asked about attorneys F. Lee Bailey and Melvin Belli and making contact with one of them on the Channel 7 morning talk show. So this was arranged and they were able to bring in Melvin Belli. Listeners to KGO Television's AM talk show heard a voice this morning purporting to be that of the Zodiac Killer. The man phoned the show after advising police last night that he would and would want to talk with attorneys Melvin Belli or F. Lee Bailey. Belli showed up and listened while a man, who said to call him Sam, asked, What will they do with me? I don't want to go to the gas chamber. He complained of headaches and he groaned as if in pain. The attorney and show host Jim Dunbar made a date to meet the caller later in the morning at an undisclosed location. Belli, Dunbar, and the chief of inspectors went to meet the caller south of San Francisco. They waited 45 minutes with no contact, and the police came back with this report. Nothing came of that. We went out to the location where the meet was to have been. Mr. Belli was out there, Mr. Dunbar was out there, and nobody appeared. Can you tell us where that was? It was in the, uh, a little out of San Francisco, in the outer end of the Mission District. Do you explain to me what the Zodiac would call that program this morning? Not necessarily. I listened to the program. My opinion, my, for what it's worth, my, my opinion is that this is no hoaxer, no prankster. The man on that show, I sincerely believe, has a problem, has a mental problem, but he may or may not have been the so-called Zodiac person. So, no one knows yet if they had the Zodiac Killer on the phone. They'll have witnesses listen to a tape of the broadcast to determine that. But it seems that a solution to the five Zodiac murders is just as far away as it was before. Spencer Michaels, KCRA News, San Francisco. On November 8, 1969, a Saturday, the Zodiac Killer mailed a letter with a cipher enclosed. The cipher read in part, That wasn't me on the TV show. On November 9th, 1969, a Sunday, the Zodiac Killer sent another letter that was seven pages in length. Then, on December 20th, 1969, the Zodiac Killer mailed a letter to Mr. Melvin M. Belli at this address. Dear Melvin, this is the Zodiac speaking. I wish you a happy Christmas. The one thing I ask of you is this. Please help me. I cannot reach out for help because of this thing in me won't let me. I am finding it extremely difficult to hold it in check I am afraid I will lose control again and take my ninth and possibly tenth victim. Please help me. I am drowning. At the moment the children are safe from the bomb because it is so massive to dig in and the trigger mech requires much work. To get it adjusted just right. But if I hold back too long from number nine, I will lose all control of myself and set the bomb up. Please help me. I cannot remain in control for much longer. So how did the Zodiac Killer know Melvin Belli's home address? Well, of course, he looked in the phone book. And here you can see Belli Melvin M, 1228 Montgomery. And uh, 
His law offices are at 722 Montgomery. And here's what the Melvin Belli residence back then looks like today. And then here's the um, law offices and what they look like today. Well, this ends this episode of Unsolved. And in the next episode, I'm going to cover another letter from the Zodiac that follows this letter several weeks later. So I'll see you the next time.